Guys, I'm going to now do a screencast demo uh, on how to uh, calculate a powder pattern. This is a very easy thing to do, and uh, you'll notice I've got this giant. Whoa! Look at that spelling. Grad's collar. Oof. Don't don't pay any attention to that, please. All right. So, um, <clears throat> this is the SIF file I sent you. So it's a crystallographic information file. I'll do a bit of manipulating in. Uh, in Mercury, which is the program that you use. You go download it from the website that I showed you. And I'll just load it uh, here. Okay, so Mercury is now going to bounce around a bit. And uh, my version is probably a little older. Whatever. I like old things because I'm getting old. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is fine. Maybe it looks similar to this. Maybe it doesn't. It's, it's fundamentally about what you'd expect. Now we're gonna open it and uh, desktop file name crystallographic information file open. All right, and this is what we get. So this isn't this isn't a moth. You probably guess. Now you have to remember that crystal structures are only going to show you as much information as is necessary. That is to say, this is a an expansion of the asymmetric unit. So if you remember. We talked about an asymmetric unit in class. It's actually, as I recall, this section right here. Oh no, it's this section right here. Ooh, yeah, I think it's this section right here. And they do a symmetry. It does a symmetry operation to complete the full cyclodextrin. Now, this is only part of it. It turns out that you start building things together into a, a big box uh, related by symmetry into something called a unit cell. And uh, it so happens that our unit cell contains the full CD MOF cube. So to, to illustrate the whole unit cell, what you have to do is you have to go up to uh, your menu and calculate and packing and slicing. All right. Now, packing and slicing shows how the crystal, you can calculate how the crystal packs. And you can make this infinitely large until it drives your computer nuts. Uh, but you know, as, as we said, crystals are an infinitely stacked array of random, of, of very ordered uh, materials. So it would make sense that if you go over here and you say, you know, the unit cell, which is basically um, the, uh, this is sort of the symmetry, the, the box in which the, uh, it, 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 what's a good way to say it? The unit cell is, um, where you put all the stuff. Ah, that's a terrible way to say it. It doesn't really make any difference, though. The point is, is that you, you really got to start building out the full extended structure to really illustrate what this what this thing looks like. So we go over here and we can click Pack. And what this will do is it'll give us uh, sort of the contents of a full the full thing. So that it'll illustrate the unit cell, and the unit cell is actually that black lined box. And it's a perfect cube, which is what you'd expect because it's a cubic crystal. Uh, but you'll notice it's got a bunch of stuff all over it. And you can go up here and go to like um, style, space fill. We can do ball and stick. And it's like you rotate it through, you can start seeing the holes. But it's not quite what we want to see yet. We really want to see just the cube, right? I mean, if that's really what you want to see. It turns out that's fairly easy to do. Uh, you just have to sort of trim off the spinach. So uh, the unit cell contains partial, partial uh, components. So it's got this little guy in here. That's that's sort of a fragment of the asymmetric unit all the way on this side of the unit cell. And consequently, uh, the unit cell, I guess for better explanation, this cube is what repeats infinitely throughout the entire crystal. It's, this cube is in stack next to this cube and this cube. So let let's just clarify that cube. And we can do that by trimming away everything that leaves the cube by clicking on these buttons over here. This this basically tells uh, it to uh, go on the A, so the A side, the A, where's A? There's A right down there. So it's going to start start disregarding things that extend beyond that. And then we're going to get rid of the B. And we're going to get rid of the C. Alright, and then we've got a little bit of Wrap over on this side, and we can do that by ignoring that part of the unit cell by decreasing the other side. Decrease the other side, and then uh, it looks like it does it. So, boom, now you've got the unit 
cell. And you'll notice the unit cell is actually the cube structure of CDMOF. All right, and you can look closely, and what you'll notice is, all right, these purple guys, these are potassiums. So that's really cool. Uh, these little red dudes that are floating around here, those are just some waters. Um, oh, you know what? Those aren't waters. I bet those are. Let's go over here and see if I can trim those out. Yeah, they might be water. Let's just call them water. Why not? Well, those are uh, water. So, you know, you get water in here. This water, I guess, is fairly well behaved. Um, it would be embarrassing if those were just stray oxygens from the other cyclodextrin, but I don't think they are. I think those are actually water molecules. And you can zoom inside. So let's go inside the moth. <laughs> Whoa, going inside the moth. Going inside the moth. We're in a moth. All right. So, ah, I'm not quite in it, but whatever. You get the point, right? So now you can play with it. And you can do this with any crystal structure, actually. You go find a favorite molecule um, on the uh, CSD, the crystal, uh, CCSD. So that's basically the place you download it. CCDC. Oh, man, I butchered that. Uh, the Cambridge Crystallographic Data Centra. Ooh, I don't know what that stands for. Like, man, I'm just having a bad day, guys. Um, you can find some sifts. Anyway, what did I tell you? I said, let's find the powder pattern uh, of this guy. So this is a 3D representation that we collected from a single crystal. We can go up here to calculate, and we can pull down the powder pattern. And this is a very simple calculation for a computer to do. And this is what it looks like. Now, uh, I was hoping to reuse these screencasts. I'm going to point something interesting out uh, that I will be paying particular attention to your interpretation of the powder data that you collected because the powder data that you received well you just do the match and I'm curious to see how deeply you think about it um, well I'm curious and, and I'm very intrigued to see how, how carefully you, you consider how do these peaks match up at these angles these are very sharp well-defined obvious peaks and they can tell they go all the way out some uh, just some some high theta so this down here is your theta you know the angle of the scan theta all the way out to 50 degrees uh, and uh, you know you look at your thing and you'll see some really nice sharp peaks um, but I will tell you this intensity matters all right this this these high intensity peaks they really shouldn't match the high intensity peaks that you see on your PXRD. And if they don't, you've really got to question what happened, what's going on. And, uh, you know, short of conspiracy theories um, involving, like, the NSA, you should probably try to rationalize why or why not these are here or there, well, why they would be missing or why they would be different, all right? And uh, saying that they're different because I don't know. Uh, just giving some sort of vapid response as to why they're different is, is just won't cut it. So uh, think on it. And um, all right. And so to, to, you can save this honk as uh, what you want. See, it's JPEG, PNG. I'm a big fan of the PNG. It's a lossless compression. So, okay. That's, that's it. So play with your crystal. Uh, I would encourage you to go ahead and try to get some of these images into your uh, report using, you know, whatever you'd like. Ellipsoids are fun. Here's a little thing about ellipsoids. You'll notice that the ellipsoids are these oblong shapes. All right, so when you do a crystallographic determination, the ellipsoids did show you basically uh, the electron density. And for this, for instance, this... Uh, this is either a, a water that's just bound to the potassium or it's an oxygen that's associated with a with a deleted cyclodextrin that's somewhere on the crystal structure. But you'll notice that these are like football shaped and that's because there's a, it's it was wiggling, if you will. It was wiggling while the data was being collected and you can see that sort of wiggle. And you'll notice the hydrogens here, they're perfectly spherical. That's because we just put them there. We uh, calculated and uh, decided that's where they go. And that's that's pretty common because hydrogens only have one electron and uh, one electron is hard to find. So uh, this was a probably an irritatingly long uh, screencast, but that's that's how you go about it. All right. So if I can figure out how to turn this off. Oh, there it is. All right. Bye.